Hey, hot, hot take, or you could see this when Coach Rule says, you know what? I'd rather have guys at practice than at games. I know this may be a little controversial. He said it, and I was like, zero controversy at all if you believe in your product. Yeah, I mean, I I think most coaches feel that way. I, I the, the guy who shows up for the game – like you can't count on them. Right. So you're, you're going through, you know, and for most of us, the game is what you're paying attention to. And that's, you know, where someone could flash and you don't get to see the, the Sunday through Friday. But if, if someone's unreliable Sunday through Friday, how in the world are you supposed to feel good about them on Saturday? Mm. You know, regardless of how they have shown up in the past, like, Playing when the lights turn on sounds really, really nice. But for the people who have to put together the game plan and, you know, for the other uh, the other 10 guys on the field to be able to rely on someone who has been um, missing, if you will, or just hasn't shown up uh, when his name has been called just because it's practice, like that that puts a lot of undue stress and undue burden on, on everyone else. And so, yeah, I... I totally understand why guys who tend to play that fans aren't excited about are also guys who show up and do it Sunday through Friday. Like you earn those opportunities. You earn the chance to be out there on Saturday. You don't just get to be out there because the lights shine brighter and you happen to excel in that moment or what it seems to be. You might care more, which means you're willing to put forth the effort to then do the job, but they need that the other six days of the week. Like it's which is, which consistency. Is, which is interesting because that's how he's kind of geared the recruiting, right? Because that's who he was – that's what was the catalyst of the conversation was, I'd rather have recruits come to a practice yeah. in a game. Like, like see how we work. See what the regimen is like. See what the rigor is like. And he said this, whether he's in a high school class, classroom in Omaha or to the media the other day at his presser, like that message is consistent because I think he not only wants to show his staff off, he wants to make sure that you're okay or at least know what you're getting into when you watch the level of intensity and what's expected of you once those whistles blow and it's not the fun stuff like a game. Well, I think people have a tough time understanding this, but if you ask recruits, like if you ask your son or if you ask Christian Jones or if you ask whoever over at Westside, what they get out of a game day visit, it looks good on Instagram. But you don't get to spend as much time around the coaches. You don't really get to experience. I mean, you're you're sitting up in the stands. Like, you get to experience the environment and the atmosphere. But, and this might be shocking, you don't get to do that as a player. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not, you're not out in the stands during the game. You're not tailgating before the game. Like, you're, you're involved in the operation. And so practice gives you the real chance to watch these guys work the real chance to see how your position coach responds to stuff, a real chance to see what it is that you do on the days that you spend most of your time at the university of Nebraska. I mean, if you add it up and you're a four year player and you happen to not go in the transfer portal and Nebraska happens to play in bowl games again, that's uh, what 52 games that you get. You have a lot more days Sunday through Friday that don't have a game that you have to be involved, that you have work to do, that there's, you know, things going on that aren't those 52 days. So I, I've i never understood, and I think coaching has, has evolved around this, I've never understood the idea that Nebraska's game day visits are better mm-hmm. than when Nebraska recruits off season. And I, all the statistics back this up. They get more commitments. They get more time with coaches. They talk about it on the back end every single time. They want to spend time around the people that are ultimately who they're going to spend time around. You can't do that on a game day. Like it's it, it's nice to have a coach actually come out and say this instead of the previous few coaching staffs where it's like, well, we want to showcase the atmosphere. And I get it because the fan base at Nebraska makes a big difference. But ultimately, that's not who these people are six out of the seven days of the week. It's interesting because I think Robbie was the um, not the first, but up there when we were talking about recruiting calendars and dates that are important, whether it's a summer, a a winter, February, and I kind of had my stance and he's like, nah, you know, how about, you know, June, right? It gives you, and he had his, this was early. And so I I thought about it and my initial, at first blush, I was like, well, what about 
that's going to contradict everything that we've thought the last 15 years about the game day experiences, right? Because remember when people used to make excuses for Nebraska recruiting, it was, well, we can't, we can't get kids here for games, but man, when they come, we sure can lock them up. So gosh, we have got to get them on campus and somewhere quietly along the way it's turned into, yeah, we need to get them on campus, but it may not matter when. Yeah. Let's just get them on campus. It seems to debunk all the myths that we've had for the excuses of why we struggled over the last 20 years. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at Ja'Cory Barney. You were able to beat out Miami for Ja'Cory Barney, and he came in June. I, you know, he didn't, he didn't visit for a game day until after he was already committed to Nebraska. I think that's a pretty consistent thing. Now, they will say, and and I believe this from this is from every coaching staff going back to, to when I used to talk to Ross Ells about it. The key game day visit isn't when they're seniors; it's when they're juniors. It's when they're you know they can get there and then they're standing on the sidelines and you're one of the first programs that they've gone and visited for a game day, and you just have them you know right there and then you build that relationship off of it. Um, but by the time you get to your senior year, an official visit on a game day is almost kind of wild at this point guys have already taken or locked in their spots or whatever else it is uh so it's it's kind of rare to, to see someone who you know is like oh i don't want to do my visits in may and june i want to do them in in september and october because the other part of all of this is they have their own lives going on where you're busy during high school football season you're busy as a senior taking the 48 hours to go to you know a, a remote location to go watch a football game where you only get to spend a few hours with the coaching staff and most of your time with the recruiting staff is less valuable to you than if you go in June and you can be there and you get to hang out with Marcus Satterfield or Garrett McGuire or Tony White for a lot longer of a duration because they don't have a game to get ready for. Unless you have time machines, apparently like Mooberry and Christian Jones and some of these other guys that man, like uh, it's impressive that that guys get on the hump, but you're right because they're doing it in the off season. Yeah, they, you can't do it in the season. I remember like initially covering this, and the, the big joke was if a guy said that Nebraska was going to be his fifth official visit in the season, he was never getting there because by the third one, he was committing to somewhere else uh, more than likely because it's, it's really hard to do five official visits in the fall and also play your own football season um, You know, if you care at all about your own team. And then that's a red flag if you're a coaching staff. Like if you have guys that are basically just like can't wait to skip out on their team to come to your to your game day experience, that's a little bit concerning, too. We're talking with Mike J. Schaefer from Husker 24 seven. Schaefer, have you looked at all in at the correlation between guys that visit slash commit during game days versus visit slash commit during offseason and which guys end up transferring? Uh, no, I haven't because the game day visits are so few and far between now. I think we're what in the last three site. I'm doing this off the top of my head, but the last three cycles, I think you're close to having 65 to 70 percent of your class done, um, you know, before before September. So it's the the numbers aren't particularly helpful there because a lot of the times the guys that are going to be committing on game days are guys that haven't had as many opportunities. So they're just grabbing the opportunity that's directly in front of them. Um, you know, so if we were to break that out, uh, I would imagine hey, it'd just be hard because everyone's transferring right now. So, uh, that, that is something I can definitely take a look at and just use the last three years as an example, um, as to where things are at, both a coaching change in there and, and all of that too, um, probably have to get to the end of the spring cycle and see what happens in the month of May, uh, with the transfer portal first, but, there could be something there, but it also could just show you that guys are transferring at a really high rate, regardless of when they commit. Yeah, because I guess part of part of my thought is, you know, I'm going back to this this quote that uh, Matt Rule had, and I don't remember when it was, but he he talks about how you you can't really fool guys anymore when you're recruiting. Yeah, that's because, yep. And I, I feel like the game day experience is like the dating version of the grand romantic gesture. It's like the the getaway weekend to Mexico or whatever. Whereas you will go and visit practice and like, Hey, this is just the day to day. We're just hanging out. And one gives a much more realistic version of life together than the other one does. And I'm wondering if the guys that commit after game day visits get to reality and they're like, Oh, this isn't what I signed up for. 
Yeah, we're, we're doing it in reverse order, Shafe. Like he's going to do a, a, a quote unquote of official after he's already committed to mainly do the periphery of the school stuff, the registry, like just the devil being in the details, stuff that not not the actual meaningful stuff, like being in me, you know, that actually is probably more important to somebody being recruited than the actual fluff that happens on OVs. OVs are Im important, but you got to know how guys do business. I, I, I think he, and he's so rule is so kind. I listen. He said to Christian, you know, he said, listen, take your visits. Shoot. Take five if you want, mm. but just make sure you go to practices and ask the questions that you want answered. So you can feel good in your own heart on how people do their day to day. It, He's like recommending to guys to hang around other players, to ask questions at practice. Don't don't just do the official visit thing where you may not get a good sense. That's supreme security in your product. Yeah, I mean, that that's just someone who's really comfortable with who he is. He's comfortable with what he's building. And I think it also shows you he wants guys who have done their due diligence because that way they don't have the doubt that pops up into their mind two seconds into arriving at campus, you know. <laughs> Yeah, may or may not have been what I did when I went to South Dakota State, and your parents drop you off, and you're sitting in your dorm room. And you're like, "Oh God, I made a mistake." You know, <laughs> like you you don't want that. You want to be able to 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 have everything else um, out of their mind, so that when they get there, they're focused on football. They know what they're doing. They they have a a familiarity with how things work. They're comfortable with the people that they're going to be around. Um, and and ultimately, you know, it doesn't do you any good to pull the wool over someone's eyes and then do a bait and switch on them when they arrive. Like, I, I think you really want these guys to know um, what they're, they're going to experience. And then the, the big part about the official visit conversation is it's usually the second, third, sometimes fourth, fifth visit for, for players anymore. And that's almost by design by coaching staffs. They very rarely want someone to come in for their first visit to be the official visit because it's, it's a lot harder to utilize that to show you, you know, what a realistic time in Lincoln is, what a what a normal day in Lincoln is. So um, I I continue to think official visits, they have a lot of value because the, the staff can pay for them, but they tend to be, um, they tend to have a little less value than that first time you get somebody on campus. I mean, that first time they get to experience what you have going on. And so you can kind of see Nebraska like to build um, where they have, you know, three, four guys coming in at once. Uh, so there's other guys around that that can kind of experience it. You can talk to other recruits and see what they're thinking. They can tell other recruits like, oh, yeah, I was at, you know, the Stanford practice and it had no energy at all. Or I was over here and, you know, the coach didn't spend any time with uh, you let guys talk to each other. You're going to see. And if you believe in your own product, they're going to speak highly of what you're doing. And that's going to reinforce what you're doing without having to put any effort into it. Shafe, uh, we were talking before you came on here about position groups, and we started with running backs. Um, DB has had a chance, obviously, with the coaches' clinic to to see a little bit with the uh, open practices as well. Uh, but just from what you know about the guys in the group, from what you've heard the coaches say, uh, just kind of looking for a brief summary of, or it doesn't have to be brief. We've got seven full minutes left with you. Um, your thoughts, questions, concerns, uh, maybe optimism about the running back group so far through the spring. If I, you know, just were to summarize running backs at Nebraska for the last seven years, couldn't you just say wait till October? It seems to be attrition, doesn't it? Who, who, well, who, who keeps showing up? I mean, like, what does it, what does it matter how it looks and how it sounds and how it feels and in, in the spring or even in early August, because by the time you get to October, you have an entirely different picture. A different guy has emerged. You're either on your second, third, fourth individual or the, the player that was expected to, to be the guy didn't, you know, take the ball and run with it, if you will, for a terrible pun. Um, so I, a lot of it for me, and I, this is kind of a mentality that I'm just adopting with running back specifically I guess I don't care 
Mm. Um, it hasn't been an impact enough position in the last few years for me to spend a lot of time assessing how it's going to go. I don't have a lot of belief in what's currently in the room. It continues to be a spot where I feel like they need to go out uh, and really target, really try to find a difference maker that they haven't had in years. Um, I don't know that, you know, Emmett Johnson is going to be markedly better than Quentin Ives is going to be markedly better than um, Mazuka, uh, who Maurice Mazuka, who uh, Matt Rule just brought up here recently. I don't know what to make of Gabe Irvin and Ramir Johnson because your availability is one of your biggest assets of being a player. And so it doesn't matter how good you are in the spring or how great your interviews can be or what you did in 2021. If you can't be available, you can't help the team at hand. Uh, so the running back position and then Dante Dowdell is just a big question mark. And I've heard, you know, a lot uh, about what he hasn't done or what he has done. And none of it, I guess, really matters because they're going to need someone who's going to have to take the ball. They're going to need more than someone. They're going to need multiple guys. And that position is going to remain in flux, you know, in, until October. It's kind of like when you, you wanted to dive into the offensive line or the defensive line last year. And we wanted to say, oh, they're going to be this or they're going to be that. Well, at some point the analysis is nice, but we need to see actual practical results because they have to show that they can do it and do it consistently. And so for me, the running back specifically this year, I'm very much in wait and see mode and whoever emerges at the end of spring. Great. We'll see if they can hold on to it in August and we'll see if they can actually hold on to it when it matters. If I give you like, let's say the top in state guys, um, and we'll go with, um, Jones, Lofton, uh, Terry, Carpenter, Vermas, Zebert, uh, Connor Booth. Is that eight? That's six. Jones, Lofton, Carpenter, Terry, Zebert, Mooberry, Vermas, Booth. Eight. Yeah, you hadn't said Mooberry yet. And you've got rough. you've got Vermas in the fold. Terry's in the fold. Booth's in the fold. So that's that's three of the could how how likely would it be that Nebraska could sweep? Um, I don't I think it's I don't think it's super likely. I would say maybe six out of eight. Six out of eight would be pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like I think that's I think that's realistic. Um I don't know that I would sit here and tell you which ones I don't think they'll end up getting. I know that I, I wouldn't take you there, but I I feel like six out of eight seems like it's a real possibility for them. I think that's sort of the percentage they shoot at. And if it's five, they're going to be fine. If it's seven, they're going to be fine. Like there's, I I think they they've offered the guys in the state because they believe in what they can do and how they can help the program. But I don't think there's anyone that they view that they absolutely have to get or the class falls apart without them. I mean, I, I think that's just that's their mentality. Um, and oh, they are not going to fall one hundred percent. They're not going to fall prey to the conversations that we have had every year since I started covering this, where either Nebraska focuses too much on in-state guys or they don't focus enough on in-state guys. They view them as what can these players do? Where do their numbers line up? Here's an offer. Join us if you want. If you don't, have a great time. We'll catch you next time. That's across the board, though, right? That's well, they seemingly, I mean, that's they seemingly be hard, are hard to get, right? Uh, I mean, unless you're at Central and they've gone as young as they have locally – Although I mean uh, the offers are hard to get. Yeah. Yeah. So which would it took Mooberry a long time to get one. So so I'm I'm I I'm kind of along the lines with shape, plus having seen it firsthand, like they're gonna offer the guys that they want and they're gonna recruit who they want without really the pressure. That I mean, there was guys that they could have taken from last year's cycle that they made the decision not to take. I mean, oh, yeah. they're Oh, so yeah. there's, I mean, they're yeah. not afraid to basically be like, All right, you're an in state kid, you got a Nebraska offer, we didn't get you. Sorry. You know, like I, the comfort level they have with their recruiting operation is it's refreshing. We'll put it that way. Shave, uh, just about a minute and a half here. Um, I, I know you're not, uh, cause you're talking to us. You're not getting a chance to see the, uh, spring open period this week, which, which we greatly appreciate, uh, you joining us here this morning, but is there anything as they get into sort of the scrimmage portion of, the spring that you're looking forward to hearing about? 
Uh, it's always line play, I think, right now. I Last year, I felt like I walked away feeling comfortable about what Nebraska's defensive line was going to be just off of how you would hear them being talked about after some of those open periods and uh, after some of the scrimmages. And I there's some interesting, um, you know, potential lineups on the offensive line and they've got a good defensive line to go against that can help kind of prepare them and so I am really intrigued to to sort of hear about what that offensive line uh, can do and then of course I think the other thing that's fascinating is the amount of pass catchers the volume of pass catchers the range of pass catchers who emerges from that I think they're going to be really deep uh, and I think they could be really fun uh, at wide receiver and a tight end this year um, depending on how uh, it goes for the guy getting them the ball. I'm going to give you some credit here. Uh, well, it may be a little early, but one thing I want you to keep an eye on is you and I had a conversation about this player a long time ago because I think people thought he was going to be good, and he made a lot of people super sick, so he wasn't flying under the radar. But I think you were on him early, really early in the transition process. You know who I think has got a chance to be a star? And sooner rather than later is Van Poppel. Oh yeah, I was on him from the day that I first uh, from, talked to him. From day one, so I'm gonna I I'll never forget that conversation yeah. we had, man. I I may have, I'm gonna I'm tempted I'm tempted to give you a lot of credit here. It's a little early. Fans are gonna love them. They're gonna but, love them. But, but but you look like you're gonna be pretty smart. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> That's Mike Schaefer from Husker 24/7. Schaefer, talk to you next week. All right, guys.